So Retro Station is back guys. Today I'm checking out a crazy new emulation system. This is the Retro Station GTX. An arcade game console with two wireless game controllers and over 40,000 games. Inside the box you will find a user manual, an HDMI cable, power supply, and you can see the voltage information right there. A remote control is included and it's powered by two AAA batteries. Now you're also getting a USB 3 hard drive cable and a one terabyte hard drive, which is designed to look like an NES cartridge. I think that looks really cool. You're also getting two wireless game controllers. So these are not Bluetooth controllers. They are USB wireless game controllers. So these are not Bluetooth controllers. They actually work via a wireless USB dongle. Last but not least, the game console itself, uh, it looks a bit like a TV box, but check out that cool looking design with the eyes. Now, when you plug this in, the eyes are gonna light up and I'll try and show you that. You've got the Retro Station logo on top. If we quickly check out the ports, you can see it says they're Wi-Fi 6. On the back, we have a power socket, USB port, HDMI out, you've got a 100 megabyte LAN, optical out, AV port, and on the side, you can see your two USB dongles plugged in. They're gonna be for your wireless controllers. And we have an SD card as well. And if I just take out the SD card, you can see we have a 32 gigabyte SanDisk pre-installed. Okay, and that brings us back to the front. So the box itself is powered by the S922X octa-core chipset, along with four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage. Or you can pick the highest variant available, the one terabyte external hard drive, which I have here. Now, this box also supports Wi-Fi 6 and you've got a 100 megabyte ethernet port on the back. I just can't wait to get this all hooked up and relive some old school classics. Console is powering up. I've got the hard drive plugged in and controllers are ready to go. So here we have the system UI all loaded up. If you've seen any of my previous retro station consoles, you're gonna be familiar with this UI. So we've selected all games and you can see the total figure there. That's 46,000 games altogether. So let's go through the systems, shall we? We've got favorites, Amstrad CPC, and you can see there how many games per console. We've got arcade games, MAME, Atari 2600, Atari 8000, Atari 5200, Atari ST, Atari 7800, Atari Lynx, Wonderswan, Wonderswan Color, Capcom Play System 1, Capcom Play System 2, and Capcom Play System 3. We've got ColecoVision, Commodore 64, Commodore Amiga 600, Doom, Video Pack, Odyssey 2, Intellivision, MSX 1, MSX 2, Vectrex, TurboGrafx 16, TurboGrafx CD, PC Engine Super Graphics, Game & Watch, Original NES, Famicom System, Game Boy, Super Nintendo, Virtual Boy, Nintendo 64, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Pokemon Mini, Nintendo DS, Beats of Rage Open, Atomis Wave, Sega SG-1000, Sega Master System, Game Gear, Genesis, Genesis 32X, Sega CD, Sega Saturn, Sega Dreamcast, Sega Naomi, Sharp X68000, Sinclair ZX Spectrum, Neo Geo System, Neo Geo Pocket, Neo Geo Pocket Color, PlayStation, PlayStation Portable, and then you've got a whole bunch of collections. So we've got Batman games, Castlevania games, Custom Collections, Donkey Kong Collection, Double Dragons, all the Final Fantasy games, The King of Fighters, Super Mario games, Mega Man, Metal Slug, all the Mortal Kombat games, Sonic the Hedgehog, Street Fighter games, wow, 174 Street Fighter games, The Legend of Zelda, 
and then we've got a section called four player games and that brings us back to all the games so if there's a system you want to play you simply go to it and you just hit the red button and that will open up the system and then you can see all the games that are within and you've got a description of the games and you've even got a video or a screenshot of the actual game so you know which game you're about to play so let's put the console to the test technically this should be able to handle all the games because you've got a pretty decent processor so let's start off with dreamcast as that is usually the hardest to emulate and let's see how it handles here we go
goalkeeper enjoyed that. It came from a good way out. Plenty of time to decide how to save it. Just what was he up to? He was never, ever going to score from there. Oh, was there any point in shooting from there? Good kick by the keeper. Gerard. Oh, it is. So as you guys just saw, every single game that I tested played extremely well. Uh, no issues, no frame drops, no stuttering, just smooth gameplay. Now by default, every time you power on this box, you're going to get the Retro Station gaming side. If you want Android, you hit the start button, select quit, and then reboot for Android. Now if you select that, that's going to reboot into the Android system. So we are now booted up into the full Android side. So there are a whole bunch of apps already installed, but you can go ahead and open up that Play Store and install your favorite apps. We've got Miracast as well. We've got a movie player and we've got a third party app store um, for convenience. If we quickly go to settings, I want to go to about and just show you. So this is actually the B-Link GT King in disguise. So Retro Station have used a pretty decent TV box to power this system. You can see the Android version there. It's full Android version 9. And do bear in mind, do not update this Android system, even if it alerts you to, because that will actually corrupt your dual boot. So leave it on Android 9, use it how you want, stream your videos, watch your movies, stream on YouTube, do what you have to do on the Android side. And when you're finished, power off the box. And when you reboot, you'll be back into Retro Station. Awesome, awesome stuff. Links are in the description box for your convenience. Meanwhile, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.